I'm Mike Gautier. I'm the acting superintendent at Mojave National Preserve. Um, I've been the Park Service since 1985. I'm proud to be down here in the Mojave working with Overland Bound and working with the community to, um, to keep this place awesome. Mojave National Preserve is a unique national park in that it it's it's uh it's, it's the third largest in the lower 48. It has beautiful views. It has you know has occasional water, but what it really has is a great public resource. is great camping and off road vehicle use. There's a, there's a lot of collaboration that has to happen in order to come out here uh, to our national parks and, and, and volunteer, but something important to remember is really what it comes down to is getting out here and putting boots on the ground and picking up some garbage. So that's what our Trail Guardian program is all about. We've got 20,000 members worldwide. Uh, if you want to get involved, um, please check us out and also check out Tread Lightly Principles because when you go out on your own, um, you should be cleaning up after yourselves. But the parks don't stay open without the volunteer efforts of, of people like the folks that joined us out here this weekend. So find out how to get involved uh, locally. Um, find out about Tread Lightly Principles so you're covering yourself and get involved with a, an organization, whether it be Overland Bound or, or another local organization to get out there and, and work to, to volunteer on our public spaces and our trails. Time to get to work. Uh, currently we are just off of Needles Highway just north of Needles, California, on the Nevada-California border, in BLM land, and about ready to go into the National Park, which is the Mojave National Preserve. We plan on working with the National Park Service in cooperation to clean up, do trail maintenance, and it's one of our trail guardian programs. So we're looking forward to working with the National Park Service uh, to keep our public lands open. Bob, we've way. only been on the trail. We are only been on the trail for 30 seconds. Are you lost already, already? lost? Are you <laughs> it lost? does not take long. <laughs> I'm glad to see you out here in, in your element. It's nice to talk mm -hmm. to you out here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do with the Park Service and, and what it's all about out here? So I was hired as the park archeologist for uh -huh. this, the third largest park unit in the continental US. Uh, since then, I have uh, gotten collateral duties of park historian, historic preservationist. So basically anything 50 years of age or older uh -huh. that falls into my catalog and I am responsible for it. Great, you bring up a good point. A lot, of, I know, um, so folks that come out here, the public, they come out here and they wonder what's an artifact and what isn't. And so you just mentioned, hey. 50 years of age or older can years. be considered an artifact. Right, right. Uh, and what an artifact is, is it speaks to human culture. Mm -hmm. An artifact without having the human beings that lived there on site at the time can tell you a little bit about what they were doing there, what they were eating, what they were drinking, were they butch butchering animals, what kind mm -hmm. of tools they were using. A lot of these old miners camps, railroad camps and such, 
they've left enough detritus behind for us to go in there and interpret the history of that particular place. So we're at Fort Paiute, a pre-Civil War military fort along the Mojave Road, which was a congressionally funded road, southern immigrant route into California. People in Los Angeles prior to 1858, which is when this road was constructed, were complaining to the federal government that you had the Donner Trail and the Oregon Trail and all these trails leading to San Francisco, obviously because of the gold rush. And there was nothing coming into Southern California. So there was no influx of money or investment or development. Right. And, the, and the town wasn't growing. Los Angeles wasn't growing. When, uh, when folks are visiting a site like this, um, is there, is, uh, tell me a little bit about the behavior. What's good behavior? Uh, when you're out here and and what are the kind of things that you don't like to see when you're right. out here tell us a little bit about that we don't have the same rules as as a museum does where you right. know you don't touch anything you don't breathe on anything we encourage people to visit these places look at stuff touch stuff pick stuff up um, we don't want people walking on the walls anything that's going to structurally begin to deteriorate the structure we've worked on this thing we've right. we've re adobed it and we've put mm -hmm. rocks back um, people like to climb around on them. Not a great idea. Uh, we have petroglyphs here, which are carved pe prehistoric carvings into the rocks. We encourage people not to touch those. Right. The oils in your in on your hands and your fingers tend to uh, damage the glyphs. Uh, artifacts that you see on the ground, where you're encouraged to photograph, pick up, handle, look at, put back in place where you find them. Right. Uh, the more stuff that walks away that's carried off by people, the less opportunities we have to be able to interpret the area. You know, if any of you that have visited Joshua Tree National Park is yeah. sort of the ultimate example of what happens when people go off trail. Right. They're called social trails and you just got lines through what would otherwise be, you know, a natural vegetative right. sort of area. And I've actually worked on detail on, at Joshua Tree National Parks on trying to figure out resolutions for getting people to stay on trail. Right. And what we've found is that uh, bad people are going to be bad. They, they just don't care. Yep. So hopefully the kind of message that you guys are sharing are for those yep. people that just don't know any better. Yep. And you can correct their, their behavior. Absolutely. And, and thankfully, it, it warms my heart that most of the time when we come across that kind of behavior, it's that they don't know. They don't know. They Most might just of the pull time, off the trail. They pull off the trail. They, they, hey, I got a four wheel drive vehicle. There's a car right. coming. I'm going to go off trail so that they can come by. You're not supposed and the, to do and that. And the park service mentality, and I know this from my own experience and talking with our law enforcement rangers. Yeah. If it's non-malicious, but it's still, they're still breaking the rules. Yeah. We tend to be very gentle with those people. Yeah. If somebody is spray painting or shooting, they're getting like the full law enforcement treatment. Great. And, and, deser <laughs> and deservedly right. so. While we're here, let's play a little game called uh, Artifact or Not Artifact. Artifact. That's, that's an artifact, that's not true. And I pull this out and I slap it on the counter. If he doesn't know what it is, guess who's buying it? We're going to make the, the world 
a better place uh, than we found it. And that's our mission. That's part of what we're trying to do out here. So you guys, I just uh, thank you very much for coming out here and, and being a part of that. Really appreciate that. And it's difficult to maintain. Make sure everybody's safe. Make sure everybody's having a good time and get through the trail with no damage. Because remember, we're all out here. The main purpose or big purpose is to preserve this so we have it, other people have it to use. So tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow's gonna be an awesome day. Number one, it's gonna be warmer, right? The rain's done. No rain's rain. done. Yep. We will be at lower elevation, so it'll be a little bit warmer. We're going to be traveling from here through the Joshua trees. And as of what happened today, I wanna to thank you for your hard work. When I see stuff like this, the the off-roader, the adventurer in me is like, oh cool, you know, historic penny can, but then you also have to balance it with um, the natural resources. So what did we do here with the, with the penny can? What state did we leave it in? Uh, well, much better than it was before. Uh, yeah. Anytime you have, uh, and you think of the scarecrow effect, right? I mean, usually cavity nesters in this area are going to be birds. You put up a scarecrow or you're trying to keep you know, pests away, bird pests, you put flappy things, right? And then right. that's going to discourage uh, avian nesters and things like that. Not all, but most of them. So by putting all these different flappy curiosity type things on the trees, you're going to make, uh, you know, most avian species not want to use this hole. Right. And if you look around, yeah, there are some dead, but there are mostly live Joshua trees here. They need the dead material because it's really hard to actually burrow into a live material. So these kind of dead limbs, you'll see them in oak trees or pines. Anywhere there's something dead, that's where it's easier for uh, a cavity nester, that's what they call them, um, to be able to get into this. Um, something like the penny can, it blends in quite well. Um, it's not making a ton of noise, it's not making a ton of motion, so it's not going to scare those, uh, whatever's using this away from using it. Yes, we're using it off-road, that's cool, um, leave no trace, right? But yep. some of the historical elements um, have been here so long that a lot of species that if they're reusing this nest, they're not going to be scared off because it's been there. That's part right. of the natural environment for them. Um, but if all of a sudden we come through and five of us start putting trinkets on, well right. now that's new and that's a disturbance. So we right. want to try to eliminate that. So keep the historic or cultural aspects um, and just don't add more to it. Justin, thank you. That was, that was really what's, awesome. What's this? That is a, uh, it's just a, a thank you coin that, that, that we give out just when, when somebody co contributes to the community as you just did. Um, so really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, awesome, yeah, yeah. man. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we gotta do our part. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Right on. We're out here doing a little bit of cleanup. Thanks for, or for having us out here. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, absolutely appreciate it. Um, why don't you tell folks um, what you do for the National Park Service and a little bit about what this site is all about. Uh, for the Park Service, every day I do more and more because we have fewer people. <laughs> right. <laughs> I am Chief of Science and Resource Stewardship and now I am uh, Acting Facilities Manager mm -hmm. as well as, um, as former Science Advisor with a lot of collateral duties. Wow, well, so they keep uh, keep giving yes. you more responsibility uh, as time uh, goes a, on. A virtual hat rack. <laughs> Got it. Um, hey, we're out here, and one of the things that we were talking about a little earlier was, you know, how to be a good um, a good citizen while we're out here in the park service. Do you have anything to, to add that, that folks might keep in mind when they're out here? Well, first of all, I'd just like to say that this is a big desert park. Yeah. Mojave is the third largest in the contiguous United States. The largest is Death Valley, our neighbor to the north, and then Yellowstone, Mojave is third. 
And what makes Mojave really special, really special to me, is that we have thousands of miles of these um, four-wheel drive roads. Mm -hmm. No other park in, in the United States can you take a Jeep and go as many places as you can do here in Mojave. So what's happened here is that these desert parks have become very popular. The visitation at Joshua Tree has uh, expanded by a factor of 10 just in the last few years. People love them to death. If there's a lot of trash, if there's a lot of litter, if there's vegetation destruction, the Park Service's first mission is to protect the resource. Right. That is our mission, to protect the natural and the cultural resources, the wildlife, the vegetation, the geology, the scenery. That is our mission for the enjoyment of the public. Okay. Right. And if the public enjoyment is causing damage to the resource, our mission is to curtail that damage. So let's suppose that the visitation increases by a factor of 10 here like it did in Joshua Tree. Okay, and there's people swarming all over this, impacting the vegetation, impacting the wildlife. The Park Service has to protect the, the resource. That impacts the visitation. All of a sudden, oh no, you can't camp everywhere. Oh no, you can't drive everywhere. Right. We lose what we cherish most here. Stay on the road. Yep. Okay, stay on the road. Don't take we freewheeling out like it's an OHV mm -hmm. area. Pick up your garbage, pack it out. Don't leave the tree of soap bush covered, decorated with toilet paper. We can continue to get that information out there. It's not, it's not sustainable. There's never going to be enough resources for the National Park Service or the Forest Service, the BLM, to do everything that they, they need to do, that they want to do, that they're mandated by law to do. And much of the best conservation and stewardship work happens in collaboration and, par and partnership. That's just the way, it's the only way we're going to be successful and that's the way we get the job done. Now you've never driven the Mojave Road. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a specific GPX track that is actually the Mojave Road and I'm talking to the National Park Service out here, what happens over time is that people pass each other or they just want to explore and they go off the road and that creates a visual marker for other drivers. Pretty soon a lot of people are going on that road and they're following that road instead of the actual Mojave Trail. So if you come up to somebody and you're on a single track and you need to get by, you just want to get over just enough so that you guys are practically slapping mirrors and passing each other, but absolutely stay on the track. It's vitally important. So get that GPX file. The Mojave Road is here for you to explore. Come on back and actually drive the full length of the Mojave Road. Candidly, the leave no trace. Take take what you brought with you. <laughs> it's not going to be improved by you leaving anything. Way more people can enjoy the park if more people responsibly enjoy it. <laughs>